Welcome to another episode from The Grapevine. I'm Tina. Nardine. Sarah. And we have a guest with us today. Uh, Tina Wingate uh, will be talking about homeschooling. Hello, how are Hi. you? Hello. Hi, everyone. Welcome. How are you? <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you for coming and joining us. Thank you. It's can a you, pleasure. <laughs> can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, so, I am a mom of two. Uh, that's my main title. Um, my second title is um, a homeschool mom, so another way of saying it, a home, edu a fancy way of saying it is I'm a home educator. Um, I have a four-year-old and a five-year-old. Um, I love them to death, I don't know. <laughs> and um, I'm a grad, a bachelor, I have a bachelor of uh, fine art, I'm a graduate of, of uh, school of fine art, so art is my major thing. Um, I'm Coptic Orthodox. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you have your hands full. You have four and a five. Year and you're Coptic Orthodox. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that too. What made you choose homeschooling? A lot of people ask that question, and then it's hard to say the answer saying, oh, I chose it. Um, it's more of I found benefits in it more. So um, it was more of seeing. Um, a lot of the benefits that would come from, so the choice that I made is to actually stay with my kids and take care of their route of education and um, everything that has to do with their life. Um, so I found a lot of benefits in it that surpasses anything else compared to um, any of the career that I would choose or any other route that I would choose in my life. So. Like you working versus them in daycare or something like that? If you want to talk about the journey, I think it has to do with, it was more of a soul searching. It's, um, it took a lot of prayers for me to just see if that's something that I, if this is something that really God wanted me to do versus going to work every day from nine to five and doing the basic job that he had asked me to do from the beginning, to go and graduate and be a wife and work. Um, so you say it took a lot of soul, soul searching and a lot of prayers um, and a lot of clues from God that had shown me that this is what I want you to do right now. Um, so yeah. Okay. When you say right now, sorry, when you say right now, so are you planning on enrolling them in like um, going to school later on or like at what age are you planning to stop homeschooling? So it's my first year. So this is definitely um, our trial year. Um, so it was for me to find out what works and what not. And I didn't even know whether I could do this in the beginning at all. <laughs> I was very unqualified. Um, so when I first started, I, I, I took my kids. Uh, they, so my kids are young, so I didn't really have to take them out of school. They knew At this point, they know that this is school. Uh, I just basically looked eight years ahead and I zoomed into middle school. So for now, my goal is uh, middle school, but they basically define how the years are going to go. So they defined how this year went, um, what kind of activities they like to do the most, what kind of learning skills uh, that they've already acquired that they will, they will make it easier for me to go about. So. It's, it's definitely up to them. If one of them comes one year and says, Mom, I want to go to school, uh, I will not take that away from them. So, But my, my goal is middle school. Just zoom through middle school. And if they want to, hey, if they want to do homeschool during um, high school, that's, that's fine by me as well. So. What curriculum do you use for homeschooling? The basic curriculum that we started with is the English curriculum that's um, given to public schools here in the state. So we use the same English book that all the schools use. The use, sorry, and um, 
for math. Uh, I've chosen one of the uh, methods, and it's called uh, Math Right, and it, it's a curriculum that uh, uses hands-on methods to teach math. Uh, for example, the abacus and the you know the beading system. Mm -hmm. um, then um, we've also acquired our third curriculum that we learned history and geography and a little bit of grammar. It's called Classical Conversation, and it's based on the classical way of memorizing information. And um, so two of our curriculums are actually taught in schools. So I, I looked up what the county around us use, and this is what I chose. And so can you tell me about your uh, day schedule? Like, how do you, like, do you, how do you start your day? Okay, <laughs> it's a long day. Um, I'm sure. God be with you. Like, I love to start a new day so I can send them to school. <laughs> well, I mean, you. I mean, you can really tell me what how you, we can go around and you tell me as the moms here what kind of hours you put in and then add in the hours that you put in after work and then do the math right up to when you go to sleep. So. You, you can do some math yeah. in there. God oh, bless you. I feel your pain. I know it is. <laughs> so, uh, um, our, school, uh, our school day starts um, early in the morning. We, don't, we have the privilege of not waking up that early. So, 8.30 is our mark. Um, we wake up, and the first thing we do is obviously brush our teeth. And uh, prayer is the first thing that they need to do before they, they do any of their chores. And then um, uh, we head to the chore board that tells them what they need to do in order um, before we start the day. That's cute. I was just saying that's very cute. <laughs> so that includes um, making their beds, and then they have—they know they have to make their beds, and they have to um, clean up their work area first. Um, uh, they have to feed the pet, which we have a fish. That's the, they have to make sure that the, the fish is fed. Um, and then um, after that, we eat breakfast, and then we head to our little room uh, where we kind of zone out from Play. home. <laughs> so we have to separate a little bit of what's home and what's not. So we head out to uh, our little room, and then um, we start with uh, memorizing verse, the verse of the day. And um, that's on a typical day. The days do vary. Of course. So, um, I'll talk about that in a little bit, but in a typical school day at home, most of our, we have two to three days during the week that we're not at home. So the typical day at home, um, we'll do the verse, and then we'll start with a subject or two, so mainly English and then math, and then like all the other kids in school, we have to do lunch, we break for lunch, and then um, after lunch, we do um, an activity. So my kids are really, young so we do a lot of explorations um, if we've learned about bugs we'd go outside for a little bit and look for these bugs <laughs> and if we'd have to do a nature walk or something so it's a little bit low-key after lunch um, we were being after that um, and that's two hours after lunch so by 1 30 we're wrapping up the day and that's that's the typical at home school so uh, the other days um, we'll, we'll be part of homeschool groups uh, that we'll join. And then um, there are days that uh, we'll have library days. So half of the day spent in the library. So how is your day schedule going with the kids? How do you put them a routine? and Like by like the hour? The, yeah, yeah, like by the hour. So um, we have a fixed schedule that we started with from the beginning of the year. Um, we wake up. 8.30 in the morning, not too early. Um, we have that would be the benefit for me about it. <laughs> yeah. like, benefit I one, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they do stroll out of their bed a little bit. In the, they're in pajamas some days, so that's not a myth. That's the reality of homeschoolers. <laughs> and um, they have to basically look at their chore chart, which tells them what they need to do before they start the day. <laughs> but they know that they have to pray before they even start doing that. So they do their prayers in the morning. And then they head to their chore charts, tells them if they need to do the dishes or if they need to do their beds. And um, after that, it's breakfast. And uh, we start the day with 
our first subject, which is usually English, and then we head on to math. So by that time, it would be lunchtime. And um, after lunch is where we wind down a little bit. Um, a lot of the information we learn, um, I tend to organize it per day um, so they can explore it in a practical form um, in that time. So if they're going to have to do a craft after lunch, if we've learned about bugs, this is the time where we take a, natu a, a nature walk and, and look for the bugs. You actually visit. go out and yeah, let them and they'll find they'll it. have like a bucket and they'll That's collect very like crazy. <laughs> That's very cute. They they'll touch and they'll they'll hold the caterpillars wow. just oh, to wow. see what it looks like. Like interaction. And you kind of have to guide them through it. Yeah. It's always guided play, guided education. Very so, nice. and uh, by if it's if it's a typical home day, which it's. We're only at home for two days a week. Okay. okay. So if it's a typical home day, we wrap up around. So the other days you just meet with other um, like homeschooled kids, is correct. Right. So we the if is that your question? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, my question is um, I actually have another question. It's in addition to this one. Yeah, yeah, I was just clarifying because you said two days in the house. So what yeah. about the other th days? So. So to answer that question, uh, we we enroll with uh, so a typical home educator, um, they would actually enroll in a community co-op, what we call a co-op. So it's a community group of your choice, and they vary from smaller group to state um, wide uh, groups, and um, it's it's obviously where they get their socialization. So one of the days uh, we have a group called CC, which is Classical Conversation. Um, it's a it's a local group that focuses on the classical method of teaching, which is based on um, memorization and uh, the old Western way of of schooling. And um, on Wednesdays, uh, we also joined another co-op group, and this is where we get our PE and our art classes and all the fun things. Um, like the extracurricular, all the extracurricular okay. activities, okay. and you do actually have a choice to do that with your local school. So, as a homeschooler, you do need to register with your um, with the county. Oh. Um, so you have access to all the activities and all of the summer school activities that they have. So it's pretty we were just talking about awesome. this. So, what's the difference between the public and the private uh, homeschool? Homes. Okay, uh, so. Uh, basically, when you make that choice to homeschool, um, you can register with. So to go the public route is to register with the state um, as a home educator. So your home becomes a school by law, protected with all the basic laws that a school has, and um, this is definitely funded by the state um, in terms of all the extracurriculum activities that they would provide but not everything else and um, that would give you as a parent the responsibility to hand in all your information to the state and what we call we call that portfolio at the end of the year and you get assigned a teacher that will evaluate all your work and it's your responsibility as a parent to provide and gather all the information and gather all their worksheets and provide that to the state and all the other information that the state would require. If you go the private route, we call an umbrella school. An um, umbrella school will take care of all your paperwork and they will take care of all your testings and your portfolio. And um, some umbrella schools do, do actually provide uh, classes. So two day classes, one day class a week to go over all the materials that you have basically uh, learned as, as a mom and, and kids at home. I know you said that there, there was a year gap between both kids. Yes. So do you teach them both the same material or is it like this, uh, this has their own time and this, like how does that work? Or do you have two curriculums? <clears throat> yeah, 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 like, well, I mean, would you teach it separate times? Like, First, like maybe to your daughter and then to the son or together. They have to be together. Okay. Because I, it's it's one teacher. Right. It's one classroom. You know, it's not it's not like first grade is the next room or second grade is like next to the park. 
So um, they have to be together, but they will be taught different materials based on their age. But being a homeschool mom, you have the flexibility to uh, basically assess your, your child's capability of learning. And if they're better at math, so for example, um, my, my son is only four and a half, and my daughter is five. He's really good at math. So he learns as fast as her. So it makes sense that at times they learn the same materials. But by age, there are certain subjects that you, by developmental um, capabilities, you do have to separate them by age in terms of the curriculum. They sit in the same time, but they learn different materials. If that makes okay. sense. I have two questions. Yes. They're kind of, they, they don't go together. One should be easy, easier to answer, and the other one may, the okay. may be easy. Um, is the calendar year the same as public schools where they start around August and end in May or June? And number two, do you as a mom have to take any prerequisites? Do you have to qualify to be a homeschool teacher? Or do you, like what's how, uh, those two? You can yeah. just make that choice. Yeah. Um, no, you do not. Um, it's basically anyone, any mom can, can just uh, write it. It's, it's a letter of intent that you write it to the states. And, and that's the basic qualification, is your intent to take full responsibility upon your to children educate. to educate them. Okay. Um, so given the, given, you know, just to, given the fact that if you are going to take out this step, you probably want to have a background of some sort of a teaching background, but not necessary. That's mm -hmm. what they recommend. Um, what was the second one? About the school year, the calendar year. The calendar year. Do you also year. have a three-month summer or whatever public schools have these days? Do you also like have a week for spring break like everybody else? All the typical uh, holidays. Winter break. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I see that Tina is going back and forth between the school year and then yeah, our year. So. So. <laughs> it's, it's good news and bad news. The good. Do you want to start good or bad? It's, it's, a, it's a lot of effort on you, to be honest. Yeah. It's a lot of what? I'm sorry. Effort. Effort and stress. It's and very it's, stressful. The curriculum is what basically dictates your time. So, you do, like any other teacher, you're given a book and you're given an amount, a, amount of, of information that you have to finish within a Certain span time. of time. Um, so, as a home educator, you have to come up with that schedule that tells you whether you can do it in two months or three months. You first have to dig into it first, and then your own capability. And as the year go by, I heard that a lot of moms would finish their curriculum within like two or three months, which is kind of ridiculous. The curriculum that should take from May like to one, yes. from August to June, they yes. finish from if August to if November. If you're on point every single day and you go by your schedule with no interruptions, but that's impossible because we all have lives and human life yeah. happen. Yeah, um, I, I've heard people say they they finish an English curriculum within three months. So what do they do the rest of the school year? Like, honestly, do they? Um, a, a lot of families go, that I, I know, they, they take it a lot for traveling. Um, that's, that's a big thing out there. But speaking of my own self, I have a regular, this year was just a regular August to May year. And um, it's the same capacity that that any school took, we took to finish all of our curriculum. Um, in terms of spring break and all the other, that this is the good news is that you can come up with Coptic Christmas on your own. I was just thinking that, like Good Friday. <laughs> like you can so we had a two week, week Easter, for instance. Nice. <laughs> because, um, so you 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 don't you dictate your own time off. You can have a long weekend at times if you'd like. Um, if, if you feel that the capacity, you know, you've already done enough to take a break, and that's usually the case, is you set a goal to the kids and say, if you finish this amount of units, this is where our spring break is going to start. Or if you finish, you know, English this month, um, we'll take a like vacation. Like an incentive, kind of. Yes. Like if you master this, you don't have to wait till Friday to start spring break, right? You can start it a week later or yeah. before or something. Or we'll leave early today. We won't. We won't do a full. So lots of incentives. That's encouraging. <laughs> um, um, I know this is your first year, so it's like you said, trial. But um, well, well, how how do they manage the exams? I know they're still young, but 
how like do you give the exams or is it something from the state or the school that you're assigned under like how does that work or do they go to the school like you had yeah, mentioned earlier on the days that they go to the schools um well we're we're registered with the state mm -hmm. so the state does have to if if they ask us to do any of the FCAT, they call it FSA this year. Right? Yes, yeah. I don't know why they change names. But Good luck. <laughs> it's a challenging. Like test. what's FSA? I don't like. No, I know. Florida yes, standardized state administration. Test. Yes, I would have said Florida State Assessment, but I don't no. know. Okay, and Thank it's you. very challenging. It's... Oh wow. Well. So they they have they basically if um, within the age appropriate time they'll most probably they will step in and say so the evaluator will step in and, and ask for the kids to be evaluated based on the the state standardized testings oh okay so and if you're registered with the, whether you're registered with the state or umbrella school the evaluation has to happen at the end of the year so somebody is uh, assigned to your file to evaluate your child's development skills based on their age so and um, so the, and they keep track of that because that becomes we call it attendance. So and the state calls it attendance. So this is how they keep attendance of your child having to go through all these years as a homeschool child. Um, in terms of unit by unit, like any curriculum and like any uh, book out there, at the end of every unit, there'll always be some sort of a test that I have to administer to my kids. And make sure that they sit through and 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 do it right in front of me, so that they can actually finish all the information. So I would know that everything we learned, you know, it didn't go into a forest or something. So how do you feel if they're uh, <laughs> putting down the wrong answer? But I'm there. The, I think the difference is Does teacher mode come out or mama mode, <laughs> exactly. protecting or teaching. No. Yeah. <laughs> you know that one, so you can pass your access assessment. Huh? Well, they, there's a no, bit of flexibility yeah. where, like, you kind of give them hints. You're like, well. That first one, can you just see that the, you know. So. Isn't it obvious? <laughs> Isn't it obvious? Did you mean to put your pencil there? <laughs> or? So you only yeah. have the FSE and not the county testing too? Because there is county test and FSE test. And is that for all ages though? Or oh, yes. it is here? Okay. Like FSE, they start. Uh, second third. grade. Oh, second grade. I thought third. Okay. Second. I think by, I mean, don't quote me on this because I think it's regulations that changes all the time. Mm -hmm. So by law, I'm not, I can, I can actually deny it, believe it or not. I can say I don't. Is that every state or just Florida, which is where oh, we're so located? Going yeah. back to that, yeah. actually every state has a different yeah. rule to homeschooling. You're just given the Florida. Yeah, so that's just for the, sure. yeah. the Florida. So, and there's a, there's a lot of states that are a lot harder on homeschoolers. Really? They will dig into your portfolio and make sure that you're not. And some, you know, California. I heard California is just they're living it up basically in terms of homeschooling. Mm -hmm. They they do what they want to do, and there's not much regulations out there. So, but I think if you instill in a child younger in the discipline at school or even church like just to do stuff at the prompt time it will show a lot in their adulthood so we'll see how these california from what you heard <laughs> you never know well i mean it's, it's it was just legalized in um in the late 70s so i think i have a fact did you want oh, me to read yeah, it or yeah. did you want to read no it? no it's right here okay so it's right. sorry to cut you off when you said the 70s <laughs> so tina had had a fact here that she wanted to share and i'll read it for you guys um a brief history of homeschooling the modern homeschool movement began in the 1970s when john holt an educational theorist and supporter of school reform began arguing that formal schools focus on route route learning rote learning created an impressive sorry oppressive classroom environment designed to make children compliant employees fascinating yeah okay. and it's, it's 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 just a small part of history so it's not really coined to but be it's been going on since the 70s yeah it so was very common that. and it's it's a lot more popular nowadays um in the Western world as Why well. do you think, though? Is it because of um, just the society or the environment or kids are now getting distracted in other ways or they're more accessible to doing stuff? Or do you think it's just more maybe like what you had happen is it was just a, a decision, like you had the direction, you had 
Do you have a personal opinion of why you think it's more popular, or you just that's just what you heard? I I'll go back a little bit sure. to the fact sure. where the the part of history happened, and uh -huh. that's in the Western world. That's okay. here in the states. Okay. So to to compare that to other parts of the world, believe it or not, in Germany it's actually illegal. Um, in Greece, it's illegal for you to homeschool. So every child has to comply to go to school, and has to be registered as a child that goes to daily school. Um, fortunately, we don't have that here in the States. And that's to do with the dynamic of our schooling system. Um, our, our funds, as we all know it, goes to public schoolings. But we have private schools that strive, and, and they're, uh, they're doing very well. And, and it's a private sector that actually they don't have to comply with a lot of rules that public schools do. So that gives choices, I would say, that would give a lot more freedom to Westerners to come up with their own choice of educating their children based on what they observe the two different um, school systems. So I, I'm, I'm speaking of the school system here, but I would say parts of the world like Germany where a lot of the tax money goes into, or a lot of the funding goes into schools, a big portion of it, it makes sense why they want everyone to go to, to, school. Go to school. Unlike here, I think there's different states here that will have, and you know that, there's a lot of, there's different states that will have extremely low funding that goes into public schools. And the private education is the competition, and unfortunately, private education at times strives to feed off the failures of public school. So if your child didn't do very well at uh, the school Boy, next door, public. then there'll always be another school next door that will pick up all the, the bad scoring that he had and um, all the bad behavior. They'll specialize in the bad behavior, and you know how. Sure. So. Uh, would you recommend it? Like, <laughs> to first year, year, after I two think, years. yeah. I like, if someone year. would come and tell you, Tina, oh, would you man. recommend me? Like, it's a big responsibility on CYC to take that. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'll tell you this later. <laughs> tell you off camera. But going off of, I had a question. I know I've been asking a lot, but um, what about Tina time, mother time? I know some moms, from what they've told me. I think you mentioned this off camera, mm -hmm. is when uh, they're ready to send their kids to school just to give them a little break yes. for the moms yep. that aren't working or yes. that have part-time job. <laughs> so you're with your Almost children there. from 8.30 to 1.30 and then the other days. So when do you have time like to take care of Tina? Or is it in the evening and you, you have a supportive spouse that helps you know, with the teamwork? That's a really good question. <laughs> Sorry, I, I no, wanted to no, ask you, actually, but like, I, I don't want to interrupt. I, in all the, the planning that I that partakes in my day, that's yeah. one of the most important part that I have to keep aside. Dur like on a weekly basis. So a lot of the program that I choose, I'm fortunate enough that there's a lot of, uh, here in Florida specifically, there's a lot of centers that offer programs where the classes you can actually drop off your children to have the classes. And they specialize in homeschooling. So a lot of moms are just like me. So um, that's part of my break, which I'm, I'm really thankful for. It. Um, my day ends at 6.30. So after I cook dinner, it's understood that mom will. Is done. I will not respond to a lot of questions. <laughs> I am not here. Teacher mode off, mama yeah, mode no, on. We don't do <laughs> sound. We don't do vowels. Both, okay, both <laughs> off. On and off. Done for the day. This is a knob. I'm sorry. This is an on and off. But good off thing knob. she doesn't have homework after school. <laughs> and we don't have homework, so that's a good thing. Oh, you don't? Okay. We have homework. <laughs> so you have after hours. Yeah. So you still have to go through vowels and, yes. and yes. the grammar and all of that. So math. I... <laughs> Six thirty, I shut down. We can definitely. There's no homeschooling, so there's a lot of moms that incorporate like the teaching in their like weekend uh, beach day, and they'll learn about I don't know the the different oceans, uh, the types know. of sand, <laughs> the clouds, the different clouds. It's my time. <laughs> Saturday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I think also <laughs> that um, this is a a, a decision that. For someone to take it, like, both parents have to, uh, like, yeah, they have to dig in, especially like, in our Egyptian community, usually 
the man is like, um, I just came from work, mm-hmm. tired, go to sleep. But I feel like the generations coming are not like that. Like yeah. they're more like hands on with the kids. So I feel that that's also a, a big part. Like um, the husband is always, you know, like you said, your day's done by 6.30. So I'm assuming <laughs> your husband takes care of the two hours that are left in the day, right? Yeah, well, I mean, in, in culturally also, one of the first things that really... I, I myself struggled with with the decision. I mean, it, it was kind of like a tug word. God, is that what you want me to do? Does it really? And all the clues that I've seen unfold of me, it was almost a tug word because if you really think about it, within our culture, we're children of immigrants. We're, our parents came here for that specific reason. They came so we can have better education. So I, I personally struggled with that. I know that... Um, in my environment that was the question well we came here so you can have a better education isn't that the whole point you know so it it's it's a bit hard to take i mean it's hard to take you know you you our parents give up everything so we can have this amazing education but but again you showed it like you said the few the more the generations that are here that are born here they know that there are so much options even within the schooling system itself just because you're aware and you don't have to worry about working so hard just like our parents did you're embedded into your children's school and you know what programs they're there for them and you know what extra days they'll go and they'll learn but in your defense i mean i'm not saying you have the education from here and you're you said that your goal not goal but is through middle school so they still have high school and college and further to get from here so just my opinion i feel like it's a win-win because it doesn't have to be from kindergarten, preschool to college. At least you're doing half of it. Yeah. And our culture, yeah, just like she said, we, none of us, I but think, we're homeschooled. she's doing the most harder part. Just you so think so? You know. The younger yes. Oh, yes. is the developmental? You imagine what you're, yeah, you're telling her till middle school. That's really hard. She's doing all the work. What if she starts, yeah. not a trend, but something new in our culture, like, wow, homeschooling, and now when your kids are 24 and 25, to see, well, they get to say to other Coptic kids, I was homeschooled, which none of us have gotten, that I know of, have gotten to say that. So maybe it's starting yeah. a new, uh, adding to what you said, the new generation, mom and dad work together, there's homeschooling. It's adapting to today's society, too, but but I probably understand getting some and, and it's a blessing and too. Like yeah. it's not, you know, not every mom out there can. It, it's I call it a call. It's definitely like a monastic life, believe it or not. It's a calling, but it's it's really a blessing to be able to say I can stay at home nowadays because there's so much pressure on us moms to go out there and and pursue our careers or and do all the other hundred things that we do after. And, and you know, unfortunately, a lot of moms don't have that choice. So if 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 there is a capability and you can, then and, and God have chosen that route for you, then it's it's a blessing rather than you know it's a, rather than a monastic life. I have to take that back. It's not monastic life. It's a lot of work. <laughs> well, God bless you. It's such a great choice. Um, I hope that you continue till high school, not till only middle school. <laughs> yes, thank you. It's very yeah. thank you very much I for all the info today. that you gave yeah. us today. I did. Very informative. Um, such a great episode. Thank you, and hope uh, people will learn from this kind of info. I think so. Homeschooling. Yes, we all did. We were just looking. <laughs> Thank we you, Tina, for joining us. Thank you, Tina. Thank you, guys. Have a good night. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.